So I guess it's time, so we should probably begin. Okay. So, uh, so uh, welcome to the IMSC Algebraic Combinatoric Seminar. It's a great pleasure today to have Jean Scott. Uh, and she's going to talk about uh, what's the right notion of a content for the young Fibonacci matter. Right. Well, thank you, Amri, and thanks for inviting me. And uh, pleasure to be talking at IMSC, if only virtually, again. And, uh, so, yeah, I want to address this issue of um, uh, the young Fibonacci lattice and uh, uh, the so-called Okada algebras, uh, of which the young Fibonacci lattice is the branch. And, um, but before I, I get into the matter at hand, I want to just give some general context to this um, uh, in the language of, uh, using the language of uh, towers of algebras and uh, the so-called gelfand settlin theory. So, so let's, let's begin here with, uh, So does that, uh, is that all, is this legible what I'm, what I'm writing here to everyone? Yes, yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah. So we'll begin with a, with a tower, uh, an infinite tower. Um, of algebras. So starting with, uh, so these will be all the complex algebras. Uh, so we'll start with the ground field. And we ascend. And we'll assume that so the, each of these algebras is a, they're complex. Uh, each is semi-simple. Uh, and finite dimensional. and maybe also unital. Um, and then we'll, we'll assume something special about this tower, the, the, namely that it has what's called uh, um, uh, simple branching. So, so if, we, if we have a, um, uh, if we have to say an irreducible representation, so if uh, V is an irreducible representation of, of say, AN, um, then, then of course we can take this V and we can restrict it down to, to um, uh, uh, to the previous algebra in this, in this tower. And of course, this new, so this, this restriction, of course, so this, this is an a n minus one module representation, but in general, it will be very reducible. And so we can decompose it uh, in terms of the irreducibles of a n. So this will break up as a sum. Uh, and each of these irreps of a n minus one will come with some multiplicity. So you will call this m u. And then the, the simple branching uh, requirement is that these multiplicities are either zero or one. So we require uh, that m u is zero or one. Okay. And then with this setup, um, I'm going to introduce a, a kind of ordering. So, um, so if uh, um, so, if maybe I'll go over here. So if uh, if um, say V is an irrep. of say a m and w of 
say a n, and we'll assume say that m is strictly smaller than n. But, um, then we'll, we'll, we'll declare uh, that um, v is smaller than w. Uh, if if when we restrict the the, the big representation down to the smaller algebra to a m, v will be a sum of that. So if v is a summoned, uh in this restriction from a and a m w. Okay. And this this uh, this uh, ordering induces a partial order on all of the irreducible representations of all of the algebras in the tower, or all of the equivalence classes of the irreducibles. So, uh, QR defines a, in fact, it's going to be a graded or ranked poset structure. Uh, on 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 all all the ereps so of course up to up to isomorphism okay and uh so we'll call this thing um uh, call it p all right and the the piece that's living at level n, that this sort of rank n will be, is, is will denote p n. So this is the rank n elements. These are precisely the equivalence classes of the irreps of the nth algebra. So these are the irreps of a n. Okay. And well, I mean, actually, this 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 ordering we could do, uh, in fact, uh, even without uh, the simple branching um, requirement. But in when we do have the simple branching, uh, what we can surmise from it is that um, so the simple branching. So this will tell uh, tells us uh, that if we look at uh, an, ir an irreducible representation of of the nth algebra, then it will have a a, um, a dimension which is equal to the number of uh, of of saturated chains in this post set going from the very bottom um, all the way up to 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 v itself. Okay. So as a, as a vector space, dimension of V, right? So this is where V is an irrep of a n, this will be the number of saturated chains um, Let me write it this way. U zero, U one, dot dot dot, U n. So in P, um, well, well, where U of course is the only represent the only ir irreducible representation of the bottom algebra, which of course, which is just C. So this is just the trivial representation, and U n uh, is V itself. And in fact, more, we can say more than just this. In fact, this structure, uh, this, this branching structure uh, allows us to, in fact, identify a kind of canonical basis inside uh, any of these irreducible representations. So we get, um, if you like, um, 
if we take so if um, maybe go to the next page. Can I can I move my page? Is that uh, sure? Go ahead. I, I don't. Yeah, okay. I'll move my page. Just tell me if you want to go back. Uh, and so if let me just if if um, so for um, you know for so for each ir irreducible representation. Um, um, you're at V of, of a n. We have, of course, by the general theory, the Vedenberg setup, we have, of course, a, a central item potent associated to this. We have a, an associated Uh, central item potent um, let's call it um, epsilon of v so inside of a n and um, so what we can do is we can, um, if we have a chain, so given a chain, or given this uh, saturated chain, right, which terminates at V, what we can do is we can produce a specific, um, we can produce a certain one dimensional subspace Using the item potents associated to the representations in this chain, so, so, um, uh, so if we take um, epsilon u zero, epsilon u one, so the product of all of the item potents, all of the central item potents, and we apply this as operators to the representation V itself, this will be some subspace. In fact, this will be a one dimensional, this will be a one dimensional subspace. In fact, invariant subspace. Um, of V. And, um, and we can repeat this for each chain. And in doing this, we get a, a basis, okay. So, so this this is um, so the if you like so in so this is a one-dimensional subspace. So in this one in this line, we we choose a non-zero vector where it, it doesn't it won't matter which for the purposes of this talk it won't matter which uh, uh, which non-zero vector. They'll all be of course scalar multiples of one another. We choose one and we do and repeat we we repeat this for all of the. Uh, Chains, and then in this way we get a, a basis. So the we get the so-called it's called the gelfand settlement basis. Of the um, which of these, uh, if you like, let me write it this way. Um, Sort of you um, bold, right? Where you um, is um, let's give it better. Let's call this uh, maybe. Let's call this bracket you bold, where you is is a is a saturated chain. Ending at V, and uh, this is this uh, this U is uh, some choice um, non-zero vector um, uh,
in the subspace. Um, and this, so this is a kind of basis we have at our disposal for any representation. And, um, and so what I'll be interested in um, is what's of interest is the operators which are um, uh, in the algebra, which are acting diagonal with respect to the spaces for any representation. So so-called Gelfan, Settlin algebra. So we'll call it GT of N. So this is a subalgebra um, of AN. And by definition, I mean one definition is that this is the sort of all, all A in AN. Such that if I take uh, row A, sorry, row um, V of A, um, so where row V so row V of A, this is, we want this to be diagonal, diagonal matrix with respect to this uh, Gelfan Settlin basis. Of the, right, where rho v, where rho v is just the representation, it's uh, the homomorphism from a n into the endomorphisms of v. An alternative, I mean, it, an alternative, in fact, uh, well, if you like an alternative definition, but will follow from this, that this is the GTN is in fact the algebra, all of the algebras of course are nested in this chain. And so all of the centers of the previous algebras live in this, in, in, in AN. So what we can do is form the subalgebra generated by all of the, all of the centers. So Z of A1, Z of A2, et cetera, all the way up to Z of AN. So if you like, this is a corollary. And it in fact follows from the, the uh, simple branching. And what we want is uh, generators of this of this algebra. Well, for, for, let me make it before I get say, go into that. Let me make the comment. I mean, it's sort of clear from the definition as diagonal operators that this G that this GTN um, is uh, is commutative. In fact, it's a maximal commutative. Um, Uh, subalgebra. Um, of a n. And what we want are, are generators of this thing. So um, special generators. So um, and which are called Jussie Mur Jussie's Murphy's elements. We want to find. In general, we want to find. Um, um, a sequence of elements um, J one, J two, J three, etc. An infinite sequence. Uh, such that uh, so. You know, where each JK lives in the kth algebra, such that uh, well, at least two things happen. Okay, so the first thing is that the that the first K of these Js uh, generates uh, 
the, the, the Gelsman Zeppelin algebra. So J1, J2, up to Jn, uh, generate G, um, Gt of n. So these are generators. And two, well, everything in the gauss von Zeppelin operator algebra is acting as, as diagonal operators. So, in other words, uh, there are all of the gauss von Zeppelin basis vectors are eigenvectors for any operator in GTN. So, what we would like to do is make some some stipulate something about the eigenvalues of these of these j's. So, we want to require that. So, given Given a, a, a saturate, given a G, a GT basis element, which of course is this saturated chain, um, we want to require that. The um, so the eigenvalue uh, we wanted to to only sort of care about the uh, the interaction between the k minus first and k element in this chain and to disregard the rest. So in some sense, this eigenvalue should somehow be only care about this local structure of the chain. So so there'll be some eigenvalue c which only will depend on k minus one. And if you like the covering the 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 covering relation in the in the branching process between it and UK. All right, so this is the uh, this is the eigenvalue, which in combinatorics is called the content. It's the content uh, associated to this covering relation. Okay. Um, so those are the, the bare essentials. But now, and but you um, and and as stated, uh, there will be many systems of, of sequence of elements that will satisfy these two properties. Um, sorry, Jean, may I ask a question? Yes. So, uh, do we need to additionally say that uh, J n uh, generates uh, G T n? Jn together with Gtn minus one generates Gtn. Is there some such or Jk together with Gtk minus one generates Gtk? Do you do you need a condition like that? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I think I I, I I condition two somehow takes care of that aspect or something. I mean, I I only know the symmetric group case, and there you have this thing that uh, the kth. Uh, Juicy's Murphy element generates the GT K uh, together with GT K minus. One. Right. I mean, I mean, yeah. Right. So what often what happens is that the the the, the nth element um, uh, it uh, um, sorry one more. It uh, centralizes everything uh, in a and in the previous algebra. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and these things. Well, let, me, let me let me let me finish with. I mean, I want to add extra uh, conditions. Okay. To this. So I mean, I mean, certainly what I've written here, we could ask for this, right? Sure. Sure. Uh, and uh, these things always no, exist. No, 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 all I'm saying at this point is that these two properties are, are kind of underdetermined. That they, do these always uh, exist? Yes, yes. I mean, for instance, one easy way to get uh, one way to get generators like this would be to do the following: you would take in each for each algebra, you would take a sufficiently generic central element, and then you would define Jn to be the difference between the central element, this chosen central element at level n and the course and the next central element at level n minus one. And as long as they're, they're 
sufficiently is, is generic meaning that each central element that its powers uh, um, span the center. So if we had at least that, we would get these two conditions. Um, okay. but, um, but we want kind of a bit more. Um, well, in fact, we want, sorry, um, I, I need to move on to the next screen here. I, I, so let me, let me put these as kind of provisional re extra requirements. So, um, we'll call these extra. And the more of these extra requirements, the more we'll be closer to the case of the symmetric group. So let me call it three. So one natural thing is 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 to assume that the sum of the of the the, the, fir, the sum of the first n of these juicy Murphy elements is itself central, which is kind of what I was saying. Like, so we could require that j one plus j two plus j n is is inside of the center uh, of a n. That would in this is this this requirement. We in, in this case we would say the these elements these are so called um, additive juicy Murphy elements. Alternatively, let me call it three prime. Um, we could ask that the product. Uh, Um, is central. And so this would be a multiplicative version. But then we could add for something, uh, maybe I can call this three double prime, something altogether stronger. So this will be, this will be much stronger, which is that not only the sum and the product are central, but any symmetric polynomial in these J's is, 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 uh, uh, is central. So if you like, the, the symmetric polynomials um, in the J1 through Jn, that this coincides with the entire center of An. Okay. So this, this third property, this happens uh, in the case, in the symmetric group case. So it would be something hoped for, but maybe not necessarily. Yeah. So what I would like to at least focus on are, are, are juicy Murphy elements that satisfy one, two, and say, um, uh, and say three this additive property and see what, what we can find. Okay, so I'll, I'll be looking for sort of an additive JM element. Right, I, satisfying one, two, and three. And let me, let me add right here before I, I start talking about the Okada algebra. Uh, let me add that, there, that, that there's a, and this will be helpful, it will be of use to us later. Um, there's a recent work of Doty which says in this additive case, right? So in the case when we are only assuming properties one, two, and three, that we can, ex we can, use the juicy Murphy elements to express the central elements in a very elegant way. So the, let me just write this result, this sort of new result of Doty and uh, uh, it's Love and uh, Zeilinger. So, so we can, we have the, um, the, um, let's call it epsilon v. Once again, this is the central item potent uh, 
Um, right? We, I mean, the, the center, of course, is going to live in, is, lives inside, the center of, Z, uh, of A and lives inside of the, of the Gilfan set in upper algebra. So, of course, we should always, uh, just in view of properties one and two, we should always be able to express the uh, central idempotence in terms of the Jussie Murphy elements. And as I understand for quite a while, this was a difficult problem. Um, um, and so Dotti and Zeliger and Lauf have a nice formula for expressing, exactly doing this. So if I take the central idempotent uh, 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 in, in, in AN associated to an irreducible representation V, I can write this as a, a certain polynomial in the Juicy Murphy elements. So it's a sum. Um, it's a kind of recur this is a recursive formula, as you, as you might expect. As you might ex expect. Uh, so you can write epsilon of V as a sum um, over all U. Um, which is smaller than V and such that uh, the dimension of U is, um, is one less. In other words, the things that V covers in the, in the branching post set. And then for each of these, there will be a, a, um, a polynomial P V U uh, of the juicy Murphy element, the nth juicy Murphy element, and it will be a, uh, a, a scale. So this, this polynomial will be some. This is some element uh, in the uh, in the algebra, uh, and it will be multiplied against the central idempotent associated to this idempotent, which is one level lower. Okay. Right. So this is a com this is a completely general formula. Once again, I'm just assuming. I'm just assuming one, two, and three here to get this. Um, Jean, uh, I'm not sure about this condition. Dimension of U is n minus one. What does that mean in S n? I mean, the, the, this the two representations. With... Ah, I'm sorry, not dimension. Uh, the the uh, didn't mean that. Um, U is a uh, an ear up. Oh, just an irreducible of an minus one. Okay. Of, of a n minus one, just the next layer down. So it, it just you 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 express the central idempotent by peeling away at each level le each level of the branching. So, so what this does is it makes a connect. If you like, this gives a connection between. In general, it gives a connection between the central idempotents uh, and the juicy Murphy elements, but also more importantly the contents because this p u v, well, I can write it explicitly, you can write it explicitly. It's just going to be, um, it will be a product over the, um, let's call it the w, w's, which are not equal to v, um, but which also cover uh, u. All right, so, so w is an irrep also of a n and then for each such irreducible representation at level n which is not v but which covers u we uh we take uh, the following element um, which is j n minus the content uh, of the covering relation between u and w uh, divided by the, the the difference of the contents so the content of, of uh, uv minus the content of uw. So actually, uh, Fred, I was looking at your paper on, on, on uh, the, the um, your cell theory paper. And I, I noticed that something very similar, you had a very similar expression that, that came up there. I mean, it might be that this is already implicit in your work. I don't know, but uh, I, I can't hear you. Sorry, yeah, yeah, it is in fact there, but I, I think it's, you know, I wouldn't take credit for it either. I think it goes way back. I mean, it's, it's 
Uh, these sort of interpolation formulas, you know, you see them all over. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, the, I mean, the only other place where I know of an expression uh, uh, writing central idempotence in terms of Juicy Murphy elements, there's a, a French mathematician uh, who was doing this in the con I mean, he was doing this for the in the case of the symmetric group algebra. No, I think I think it's, it's and, probably. Uh, it seems like even there a very hard problem and uh, how to, how to write these how to write say the sure the the sorry the characters of the irreducible representation of the of SN in terms of their juicy Murphy elements. It seems like a hard, it was already a, a hard problem that was involved, related to the so-called shifted symmetric polynomials. And yeah, okay, I defer to you. I, I'm, I'm a little, my memory's a little uh, weakened and I'm, I don't remember everything anymore, so. Anyways, I mean, this is a, a kind of general, set up that we have. I mean, and this, this, this gives us some clue as to relationship between these contents and, and, uh, um, and the central idempotence. And I want to sort of squeeze this a bit later because in the symmetric group case, something very special happens. And I'm hoping that maybe something similar will happen in the case of the Okada algebras. But uh, just, maybe, uh, yeah. Just, just to be clear, the hypothesis for this theorem is one, two, and three. Yes, yeah. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I mean, certainly a version would, would be valid for the multiplicative story. I mean, that's basically taking ex, exponents in some way. Um, yeah. So you, you, re, you require very little to do this. Yeah, so that's a fairly general, I mean, I, I don't remember seeing this in this generality, but probably Varshik and Okunko have something like this for SN. Possibly, yeah, I didn't. Well, I, I haven't seen that in Open Versics. I haven't. I didn't see such a formula there. It might be there implicitly, but um, but I want to point out that even now, even even you know, even with this form, even with one, two, and three, the this, this, the story is still underdetermined. I mean, there will be there will be uh, many choices of Jersey Murphy elements which will satisfy one, two, and three again. Just take, again, a, a, a recipe is take a sufficiently generic central element at each level and then just take the differences. And you'll, you, you, that those juicy Murphy elements will satisfy one, two, and three. So we want to, we actually want to put somehow more constraints in some way so that, okay, so. All right, maybe now at this point, I'll uh, uh, talk about the, um, the Okada algebra. Okay, so. Okay, so these, these were algebras introduced by um, Okada in, I think in 1994. And they have a, this kind of coxeter presentation. So, but they're like like the temporal Lieb algebras or the Hecke algebras. They have a they depend on a choice of parameters. So we so we'll take uh, two uh, infinite families uh, of of parameter of complex of, uh, of complex parameters. So um, x1, x2, x3, and, and y's. Okay. And then, uh, so the nth Okada algebra. Call it um, fn. So it will be it will be generated by um, n minus one generators. So generators and subject to the following to the following defining relations. 
So the, the, each of these generators is an item potent. Um, it's a factor xi. Um, they commute if they're, you know, if the indices are far and far enough apart. And then uh, there's a kind of temper one-sided temporally uh, uh, relation, I, I would call it, uh, uh, which says that if I take uh, the i plus first generator and I look at the following triple product, uh, then this can be rewritten as, uh, as parameter yi times e i plus one, and that's for um, I between one and and minus two. Right. And um, so let me just state some facts here about uh, facts about the Okada algebra. So the, uh, I mean, clearly, so clearly we have, we get a tower. I mean, these algebras naturally sit inside one another. Um, so we um, get a infinite tower. Um, F0 contained in F1, F2, etc. It, these algebras are each finite dimensional and in, and in fact, this is something very nice happens. So for each, we could, if I have to take any element in this uh, nth Okada algebra, then we can, we can, if you like, parse it. So it has a unique um, decomposition. Um, so I can write it as, um, Say a zero plus a one times the highest generator, and then um, I'm going to have basically a, a, a sum of monomials that involve kind of descending powers of e. So uh, the next term will be e n minus one times. Sorry, let me do that again. Let's call this a n. And let me say the next one will be a n minus one times e n minus one plus a n minus two times e n minus one times e n minus two, et cetera, down to a one times e n minus one, n minus two, all the way down to e one, right, where each a i here uh, is living in the, in the the the, uh, the previous Okada algebra so it lives in f n minus one. Okay. So from this parsing, you can immediately see so that we can conclude from this that the that the dimension of this Okada algebra is in fact n factorial. Okay. And. Um, what about the ir irreducible representation? So, so let me say this, that generic, so let me say, and I'm, hopefully I can explain why a little bit later, but for generic values of these parameters, so if you like generically, uh, each, each Fn is, is semi-simple. Um, right, and you could of course ask what are the irreducible you know, what, what, uh, how to uh, at least index the, the uh, uh, counter index the irreducible representation. So the irreps um, of Fn, they can be labeled like they're in bijection um, with what are called 
uh, Fibonacci words. Words, let's call them W um, of lengths N, right? And by Fibonacci word, I mean the following. So these are IE. Um, so W is, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word, which, so it's a product of, of letters where each, uh, each letter is either a, a, a one or a two. And the and I declare the length of my word to be just the sum of of of, of these letters, so the sum of the ones and twos. Okay. So, for instance, if I want uh, you know the uh, Fibonacci uh, words W of say. Uh, uh, of length four, right? Well, I could have say, uh, you know, one, 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 one. Uh, I could have say two, one, one. I could have one, two, one. I could have two, two. And I could have one, one, two. And that's, and that's it. And if you think about this a bit, a little bit it's clear that uh, in the, the count here is the Fibonacci number. So the, the number um, Fibonacci words, W of size N, this is exact, sorry. This is exactly the nth Fibonacci number. So there is many irreducible representations of, of Fn as there are as, as, the, as, the, as the Fibonacci number. Um, and we can also, well, um, this tower of algebras will be simply branching. And so we can ask what is the branching poset? And we can try to describe this branching poset in terms using this Commendatorics of these Fibonacci words. So, so the branching post set um, P in this case of, of the of the uh, Okada tower, Okada algebra tower. Right. So this is what's called the Young Fibonacci lattice. So in, in fact, it's more than just a poset. It will in fact be a, um, uh, um, a lattice. And uh, let me just quickly tell you the combinatorial explain what, what the, what the um, order relation is. So am, am I right? How am I? I don't, want to, I don't want to chain you if you need to go. I mean, how, how am I on time here? Five minutes, sir. Okay. Um, Another twenty minutes, at least. Okay. All right. So, uh, so it's it's kind of a bit difficult for me to explain what uh, what uh, the the uh, order relation uh, on this Fibonacci uh, poset is uh, kind of. In general, it's it's what I can do is tell you, and what typically is done, I, I can tell you what the what the covering relations are, and then by extension you get the rest of the the picture. So, so the covering relations uh, for y f. Well, also I should I point out that. Uh, this thing is ranked. I mean, as since it's the branching poset of a of a of a tower of algebras, so 
So this is rank. And we'll declare y f n, right? This will be the uh, rank n elements. And these will be all of the Fibonacci words of length n. So, so at each level of this post set, we will have Fibonacci many things. So I just want to tell you what the sort of the, the relations, the covering relations are between, I mean, the, relate, the order relations are between these two, between any two levels, so to speak. So we'll take, um, so we'll take, um, we'll take uh, W a Fibonacci word of size N and W prime of size n plus one, and we'll say, so w will, will, will be covered by w prime if one of two things happens. Um, so let me, let's, let's write this, this, this word w. So, so as we read it from left to right, first we'll encounter some string of twos. say maybe k of them. k might be, of course be zero, so k larger than or equal to zero, twos, okay, as we go from left to right. And then we'll hit a string of ones. Again, maybe l greater than or equal to zero of them. And then finally, there's some suffix, which I won't care about, okay. And uh, this first one, that occurs, uh, this is, let me color it. Right, this first one here, uh, this is, uh, if it exists, it might not exist, but if it exists, this is called the leading, the leading one, okay? And so given this parsing of, of W, we can, there are um, two types of things we can do. We can either scan the, um, uh, this sort of for this initial string of twos and insert a one. So we can either, so either, by inserting um, one into, um, uh, uh, into the um, initial uh, initial string of twos, or or we can take this leading one if it exists and then replace it by a two. So, So let me just give an example of this to be very clear. For instance, suppose um, suppose W was say two to um, two to one, right? Then um, so what I could I could in, what I could do is in this initial string of two twos, I could just in, insert a one in any of the three possible positions. So I could either um, make this a bit uh, bigger. So I could, uh, for instance, either add a one here I could add a one here. Or I could add a one here. So those are the three possible insertions of one. And, and finally, I can take this leading one 
and uh, and turn it into a two. Right. So these would be coming from from option one, and this is option two. Right. So therefore, uh, successors in this process. Right. So just to, to quickly give you a picture of the post-set, we can start with, we start with the, so if you like a picture of YF, um, we start with the empty word, and then we have the single word of length one, and it has its two predecessors, the two words of length two, namely one, one, and two. Both of them cover one, because we can either insert a one from the left, or just turn this single leading one into a two. And then, let's see, in one, 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 one can be, we can add a one to the left of that, or we can take uh, the initial one and turn it into a two. Alternatively, we can get two, one by taking two and adding a one to its right, right? So, so two, one is obtained in two different ways. And finally, we could take a, a one and uh, uh, add it in front of two. Okay. And let me just draw the next level. It will look like this. So this is up to level of four. So, uh, in your previous uh, in the diagram that you just drew, should there be a uh, should there be an edge between one two and one two one? One two and one two. One no, because um, we we can only insert ones in a in a in an in an initial prefix of twos. Um, in other words, any, any if you like any insertion of one has to happen before the leading one. And you see, uh, in the case of one two, we have a leading one here. This is the leading one. So any insertion of a one would have to be to, to the left of that, and. The only possibility would be to make one, one, two. Okay, thank you. Right, so like in, in, in let me use another color. In, in these three examples here where I've, I've, in the example where I've inserted a one, the, the, the one that's inserted is always to the left of the leading one, which I'm circling here in red. You're never allowed to be to the, to the, to the right of it. And you would have to do that in order to get one to one. That would violate. It's not at all. Uh, I, I'm. I have to admit, I I haven't seen or come to an understanding which is intuitive for this covering relation. <laughs> um, it's very artificial, except to say that it replicates the branching process of the Euclidean algebra. And it would. I, I, I would. Um, I presume that's sort of what. Okada's interest was in, 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 in de de defining his algebra is that it manifests the structure because, because really this posit structure is completely unintuitive to me. I, I, um, there's no way of thinking, it's not a distributive lattice. It's not, uh, so you can't think of this order relationship as sort of inclusion of ideals or something. It doesn't have a kind of natural you know, pedestrian you know, interpretation like that. Um, okay, so now let me, I, I want to go now to the return to the sort of maybe familiar territory of the symmetric group and kind of from there divine a sort of see, a, observe a pattern and sort of see what we might try to hope for in the case of the Okada algebra. So let's, let's return for the moment to the, the symmetric group case. Okay, so in this situation, uh, 
our algebra, we have a tower of algebras, which will be the group algebras of the symmetric groups. Symmetric group SN, okay. Um, and, um, Right, of course, in this situation, we know that the, the irreducible representations um, of the group algebra or of the group, um, these are, are labeled by, um, by partitions of N. Um, Okay, and I want to view these partitions as as uh, you know, we'll view these as as young diagrams. Right, just so everybody's on board here. If if I'm looking at the partition, say five, three, three, two, one. Right, so this would be a partition of uh, uh, twelve, fourteen. Right. Uh, then I would I would draw this uh, as you know this staircase of boxes. You know, in the top row I would have five boxes followed by three boxes followed again by three boxes, two boxes and one. So the, this is the Young diagram. And the reason I want to do this is that we can order these Young. I mean this. If you like this Young diagram as a kind of ideal in, in the post set, which is just this infinite grid. This is, a, this is an ideal in the post set, or in fact, the lattice, um, you know, which is just this infinite grid. So going off to infinity in both directions, right? So where you're increasing if you go, uh, right and increasing if you go uh, down. And, you know, and of course, whenever you have ideals of a lattice, you can order them by inclusion, right? And, and when you do that, you get the, the, the uh, branching lattice. So the, so the branching lattice in this case, the branching post set, I should say, um, uh, in this case is the young lattice. Y, right, which is, if you like, all partitions of all sizes ordered by, by inclusion of ideals. Okay. Is every, 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 I'm sure everybody's probably okay with this. I, I can draw more as, as, as you would like. No, I think this is okay. familiar territory. Okay, so, um, right, so we, we, we have a standard uh, uh, lattice and um, of course, the, and of course we're going to have a gels von settlin basis and the, this, which will consist of chains uh, in this young lattice, and which we think of as uh, fillings, uh, so the GT basis here. Uh, this will be just the, the uh, well, these are, of course, the, the saturated chains. Um, you know, ending. So the, VT, the GTV basis for the representation corresponding to lambda will be saturated chains ending uh, at lambda and Y, which are usually thought of as, as, uh, as standard Young tableau. 
it's a bold T uh, of shape of shape lambda. And then using this language, it's very easy to write, say what the contents are. Well, first, what, what are the juicy Murphy elements, the juicy Murphy elements? Um, so J uh, N, so it will be just a, a, so this is some elements in the symmetric group, in the group algebra of the symmetric group. And this will be just a sum of transpositions which involve N, so it will be, 1n, 2n, 3n up to n minus 1n. And then the, the if you like, the content. Uh, so if I take jk and I operate on a, on a basis given by, uh, so he, this t is a, standard tableau in shape lambda. And the, I, the, 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 the content of this case, the, the eigenvalue is just going to be J minus I. This is the content, T, where, um, the pair i comma j; these are just the coordinates of the of the of the box of lambda lambda, which is labeled by k. Coordinates of of uh, box b of lambda uh, labeled by k. And then, okay, and this is the, the point that interests me, is um, what we can do, so take, take lambda now, partition of n, and let uh, S of lambda be the corresponding sure function or sure polynomial. Then, um, and let's do the following thing. Let's take S of lambda and let's evaluate it um, um, at a bunch of, at K initial, at, at K many, uh, at Q many ones. And let's take the result and multiply by Q to the minus N. Then, um, well, there are two ways of writing this. One is uh, we can write this uh, using the characters of the irreducible group uh, up to symmetric group. Namely, we can write this as a, a sum over partitions mu of n, q, uh, in this case, to the number of parts of mu minus n times a character value chi lambda mu uh, times z inverse of mu, right? So where chi lambda mu is, if you like, that's the uh, irreducible character um, of lambda evaluated at the mu's conjugacy class. in the symmetric group, um, so you call it C mu. And Z inverse of mu is, if you like, one way of writing that, it's n factorial divided by the size of this conjugacy class. So, so the evaluation of a sure polynomial has a kind of character theoretic uh, interpretation in, from, from coming from the symmetric group. And at the same time, we can further rewrite this quantity uh, in, in, in what's called the so-called so content formula. We can write this as Q to the minus N product. And the product is taken over all boxes of the Young diagram of lambda. 
Uh, and then you have a factor for each box and this factor registers the content. The C of B over H of B, right? Where C of B here is, uh, uh, if you like, it's uh, J minus I, right? So the content as I explained before. Um, so it's uh, the box has coordinates and we take the difference of the coordinates. And H is the hook length, but I don't want to get into that at the moment. So we have this very nice formula relating the, the sure uh, evaluation of the sure function or the sure polynomial and the content. Now the thing is, and I want to replicate this, and there's some, in some way I want to replicate this, and there's a good hope for it because in the, in the Okada algebra has a theory of sure, uh, of sure functions in a sense. Um, maybe I'll just move the screen here. So let's call these the Okada sure functions. Okay, so all of this is going to happen. These are going to be entities happening um, in the vector space um, of polynomials and all of, so now I want to think of the parameters, the X's and the Y parameters as kind of variables. And I'm going to take this polyno infinite polynomials in infinitely many variables. So, you know, the polynomials in the X's and the Y's in this infinite dimensional vector space. And let me, let me just introduce some quantities first. Let me declare, so for K, so for K, uh, uh, um, uh, an integer, we'll let AK, um, so this is the determinant I saw written nicely in, in Fred's paper, when, uh, another paper of Fred's, um, although he wrote it as a non-commutative determinant. I want to write this as an honest commutative determinant. So this is a determinant of a tridiagonal matrix, and I obtain this matrix by putting the X's on the diagonal, so X1, X2, X3. And I put ones in the subdiagonal. And I put Y's in the superdiagonal and zeros elsewhere. Right, so this is a K by K tridiagonal matrix. And we'll define BK, we'll define BK minus one. It will be a similar determinant, except it will, the initial row is a little, is a little bit funny. It's Y1, X1, Y2. And then the rest is, is same pattern. It's X3, Y3, one, X4, et cetera. Right, so this is also k by k tridiagonal. And um, when I have any uh, f, which is a polynomial in this, you know, in these x's and in these y's um, and an integer say n, a positive integer, uh, non-negative integer, I'll declare uh, f bracket plus n. This will be the polynomial where we replace, uh, uh, we shift all the, the variables by, the indices of the variables by n. So we send xi to xi plus n and yi gets shifted to yi plus n, okay. And now I can define the sure Okada function. So, so for uh, W of length n, the Fibonacci word, um, we'll define SW uh, recursively. So it will either be, it will be AK, um, if, if W is just a string of ones, and it will be uh, 
this shifted BK, so it would be BK, uh, well, let me write it this way. If, so it's either, either W is a string of ones or W um, is some string of ones followed by a two and a suffix. So this initial string of ones might be empty, K might be zero, in which case it's just a two, but let's write it as one, a bunch of ones, two, and then a suffix. And in this case, the, the sure function will be BK shifted by the length of U um, times the sure function of U. Okay. And these, I mean, they, they, these really form a kind of sure theory in the sense that you have a, you have a, uh, 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 a little bit Richardson rule. So if, uh, if I have U, say, um, of length M and V of length N, Fibonacci words, then I can do the following thing. I can take the sure function of U. So this, this product, this rule will be sort of non-commutative in the sense that uh, the left factor will be always shifted by the degree of the right factor. So I, I take the sure function for U, I shift it by the degree of V, but the length of V, and I'm going to mul then multiply the result by S of V. And then that can be written as a sum of sure functions S of W, so where the length of W is M plus N, with some non-integer coefficients, C, W, U, V, also with our Okada, Littlewood Richardson. General. Okay, I mean, uh, Okada originally wrote this in terms of it, 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 using, non, using just non-commutative variables, but I, I find it's more helpful for many reasons to write write these quantities as honest commutative, commuting, uh, you know, polynomials with commuting variables, but then just define the product to be non-commutative by the shifting process, right? So if I want to take this non-commutative product of two things, I always shift the left factor by the degree of the right in some sense. Right? So we have a theory of, of, of Okada sure functions. We also have Okada Maybe I won't explain this. I mean, I can do it if you want, but let me just say that we have also uh, Okada, um, Okada power symmetric functions. So, so PW for, for each W for each Fibonacci word. Um, and they're related by a, a, transition, a transition matrix, which is somehow a, a legitimately a kind of character table. So the, you have uh, um, that if, if you want, uh, uh, how does this go? Uh, if I want uh, the sure polynomial, um, um, I'm going to probably make a mistake, but if I want uh, SU, this will be uh, the sum um, over V of size N uh, character values UV times some analog of this Z um, P of V. I think that's the correct rendering. Right, where these X UVs, they, they form a, a, a character table. 
right? And there are many ways of thinking of these character values. I mean, they, 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 they really arise as traces of irreducible representations evaluated at certain elements of the Okada algebra. And they have all of the, they mimic most of the properties of a character table of a group algebra. Um, I mean, in terms of the first and second orthogonality properties and also the fact, also there's a kind of multiplicativity, multiplicativity also that they, they enjoy. So, so the, let me just end here by saying what we would like to, we would like to sort of see a relationship, you know, that between these Okada sure functions and, uh, and, and whatever contents would come from our choice of Juicy Murphy element. of the choice, right, of the, cho of the choice of Juicy Murphy elements. I mean, we would hope for some analog of, uh, of this story here, which happens in the symmetric group, right? Because all of these quantities here that I've written um, make sense in the Yokata algebra. I mean, I can form more or less such a, a quantity um, like this, in the sure Okada algebra. I would have to know what parts meant, and that's, that's a little bit of a stumbling block right now, but this, these kind of ent entities all make sense for the sure Okada algebra. And furthermore, we would, I mean, a vehicle for doing this, I think, is, uh, is this result, let me just copy it. Um, is this result of, of um, uh, is this result of doting, right? Which which gives a general uh, connection between central item potence. Um, um, well, why why does this help? The doting result helps because because the sure. I think maybe I should stop it. The, the Okada algebra has a trace, has it with a so-called Markov trace. So the Okada algebra has a Markov trace. Um, and if I take the trace of a, of a central item potent, In, in, in the Okada algebra, um, this turns out to be the sure. This t t turns out to be you know a product of x's, so x one to x n inverse times the dimension um, of the representation corresponding to u to w times um, times uh, times the sure Okada function. Of W. So if I take Doty's result and then I take the Markov trace of both sides, then I'm going to get. I'm going to. I mean, I already are going to see, see some kind of constraint on on the on the sh on the sure functions in terms of the traces, the Markov traces of uh, um, of the of the right hand side. Okay. I don't. I don't have a, an answer to this yet, but I mean, this is a, the approach that I'm one of one approach I'm following in trying to to isolate what should be Juicy Murphy elements. So, I think uh, maybe I'll stop there, um, but I can elucidate, try to explain whatever if, if, if anybody has any questions. The Okada should polynomial symmetric. Yeah. Huh? Sorry. Uh, are the Okada sure polynomial symmetric in the very uh, well? Okay, uh, no, not in not in, not in any normal. <laughs> um, so you have you have to so what I, I, this vector space of polynomials in X and Y's that's not really the 
true ambient universe. I would say what you should do is for every Fibonacci word, you should define a certain monomial in X's and Y's. And then the, the universe where everything should happen, the sort of ring of symmetric functions, if you like, should be the span of these special monomials. And the product in this space should be the shifted product, right? Where you take polynomials and you shift by the, by the length. Like if I take two of these monomials and I want to take their product, I should shift the left, the indices of the left one by the degree of the right. Okay. That's what should, that's what I think should be your ring of symmetric, it will be a non-commutative ring uh, of symmetric uh, polynomial. Um, I mean, essentially that's the kind of, I mean, essentially that's already in Okada's work, except he, yeah, he wrote things in terms of, um, he wrote things just from the very beginning in terms of non-commutative variables. I mean, I, there's a utility in, in, as I said, in, in using these commutative determinants. The reason you want these, this commutative series with these x's, with these indices, is because uh, you can use these sure, as I've defined the sure Okada functions, you can use them to define the action uh, of the sure of the Okada algebra on its representations using directly these sure Okada functions, this, this sort of structure coefficients. And are these uh, little Richardson coefficients? Uh... Are they known? Uh, is it known what they count? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a thing that was in Okada's paper. They they count they they count certain chains um, uh, in the in the certain certain um, uh, saturated chains in the in the in the young Fibonacci lattice. So um, there, there's at least one combinatorial interpretation. There's probably n n a number of them. Um, so yeah, there, there's a meaning for those. There are also, there are also the structure coefficients of, the, of an induction product. So I mean, I have this tower of algebras, so I can, you know, I can play the game of taking representations of two of the Okada algebras, censoring them, and then inducing out. And, right, and that induction product will have multiplicities, and those will be these, these Littlewood-Richardson coefficients. Um, in fact, that's how Okada introduced them. I mean, he introduced them through this induction product. There's also a theory of Koska numbers too. So, I mean, all of the, the, the entities that show up in symmetric group are, are at play here as well in some way. Um, so, uh, do you know any commodorial definition of this Okada's full algebra? Like generating function of some commutative object. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I, there was some interference with the. Uh, do you know combinatorial definition of Okada Sura algebra? Uh, I mean, in terms of something. Uh, you mean like like, what, like what kind of combinatorial definition? Like 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 Sur function or the generating function for semi-standard Young tableau. Oh, I see. Right. Uh, Right, so there's no obvious, so there is a theory of, of tableau here. So for the, for the young Fibonacci lattice, you can make a theory of, of, uh, of tableau, of what are, what are called Fibonacci tableau. And you can make a, a theory, in fact, of semi-standard uh, Fibonacci tableau. But unfortunately, there's no obvious way of thinking of the okada sure function as some sum uh, you know, indexed by semi-standard tableau. That that's kind of lacking right now. Uh, that's uh, yeah. That that's an, a clear obstacle to, to to carrying out what I'm sort of proposing. So, and if there are any uh, other basis of that uh, ring of function, where you can express and you will get some positive positivity of the coefficient, like uh, you told that uh, once you express this in terms of power sum so you are getting some coefficient right there yes so uh, if there's some other kind of uh, some good function or basis so that the uh, change of basis thing is nice 
Well, okay, so, so, the, the, so we, there's a theory of power symmetric functions. There's a theory of, uh, of complete homogeneous, what would be an analog of a complete homogeneous, excuse me. Throw away the phone. <laughs> um, there's a theory of, there's an analog of the homogeneous complete functions. And there is a transition between, say, the Shurakata and this homogeneous complete, which is uh, positive in a sense, non, non integer and non negative. Um, so that's another basis. Um, there is also a monomial story, although I, I haven't explored that as much. Uh, is that is I mean, so you have you have you know the the classical families you have analogs and and they and they will be basis of this of this vector space that I described in Ishwanal for you you know you take these special monomials and you take their span is that yeah uh, it's quite convincing so and the other question is so when you have this Galvan Zetlin algebra so you will have a nice basis right means the saturated chains yes. and like in the case of symmetric group on the saturated chains are uh, the standard young tableaus and yes. uh, you said that um, here the little Richardson coefficient that analog they are also counted by saturated chain in that young Fibonacci lattice so if the tableau thing you are mentioning here if that's related with this saturated chain uh, well okay so so there is a there is a way to, uh, you know, given a, a, a young Fibonacci, a standard young Fibonacci uh, tableau, there's a, there's a recipe, actually there are several, but there's at least one recipe for uh, expressing it as a saturated chain. The trouble is that this, uh, so there's a bijection between standard uh, to Fibonacci tableau of a certain shape and saturated chains going to that shape. But the bijection does quite a bit of violence. Um, mm -hmm. um, in some sense. Um, and so going to going to the question about, you know, how to think of Littlewood Richardson coefficients. Uh, I don't know. I I I, I know how to. I, I know how Okada has ex explained this in terms of saturated chains. Presumably, you could use one of these bijections, and ex and and write it in the language of Fibonacci tableau. But I it might not be a good story because, as I said, this these bijections are not they're not good. I mean, I, to give you an idea of why they're not good, or wh why there is a problem, is that so this young Fibonacci lattice is not distributed. And so you wouldn't expect that uh, you wouldn't expect that, say, the saturated chain that there, there's any kind of promotion operation on you know so like yeah. Schutzenberger involution involution on chains because it's not distributed. But in fact, there is, and you can import it from these bijections actually. But but it's very strange. It's not. Uh, uh, Anyways, I, I guess the answer is I don't know how, to, I, I don't know the answer to your question. And I, I, I suspect that it would be somewhat difficult because of the, because of, because of the problems with these bijections. I mean to say that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you could approach the content problem from that point of view. You could say, well, I'm going to try to, you know, think of contents in terms of young, you know, fillings of, uh, you know, in, in terms of tableau, as I do, you know, with the symmetric group case. But if you track, you know, the filling of boxes uh, a, a, a versus how the ascending chain progresses, uh, and you try to sort of isolate a, a, a content for a covering relation, you see that these bijections are problematic from that point of view. You, you'll get a, the content will not be, uh, will be sort of ambiguously uh, Defined, it will get two different values coming from two different uh, 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 standard Fibonacci tableau. 
So like you can't get a content theory that way from, from what I can see. But in other words, I can't say I'm going to declare, you know, whatever index sort of occupies a certain box in a, in a, in a, in a Fibonacci tableau. I can't sort of declare a number associated with that and hope to use the bijection to be able to label the edge of the Fibonacci lattice with a content. That, that will not work, for instance, because these bijections are somehow bad. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess uh, there's, there's more questions, but it's uh, kind of past 10 o'clock now here. So uh, maybe uh, we'll, we'll continue this discussion. Um, I'm, I'm actually curious about a lot of things, so I'll probably get in touch with you. Ah. And, uh, but but I this meeting. Any, any feedback yeah, from no. any of you on this? Uh, it's, uh, um, and if you can share the, the notes, uh, that would be nice. You could just email them to me. Okay, I hope they're they're you know legible enough. I I, I can. Oh, I your can handwriting is gorgeous. Well, I mean, when I'm sitting studiously, you know, in quietly in the corner, it's good. But you know, <laughs> in vivo, it's kind of a bit messy. I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. Okay, so thank you, Jean, once again. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting. Thank you for all coming. Thank you, Jean. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, thanks for. So, uh, yeah, so let's be in touch and. Uh, yep. And, uh, hope to. Um, see. Okay, thanks, Jean. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's nice to. Uh, I, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. Bye. I think I might have seen you. I, I don't know if we. I, I, I think we crossed paths. Briefly, maybe uh, yeah. at a conference a few years ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really very much enjoy your paper. It's been a delight to, to sort of study it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, I hope some progress will be made. Here. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Fred's uh, your papers too. Your both of your papers. I, I really the paper on on. Well, the, actually, my interest in this is coming because I really would like to try to, to play Vershik's games like you were doing with Kerov. Um, and, um, and I think you need a, a, G, a GT theory to yeah, make that you know, effective. So this is kind of a first step in you know, do, doing the Vershik Okunkov story. But I, I, I think I, I should let you, you, at least those in Chennai probably get to bed. So I, I'll, uh, um, yeah, no, but this timing is uh, kind of good because, uh, uh, well, people from everything west of India can attend. So. Well, it's, it's, it's great that you, yeah, that you set it up because it's nice to, um, to attend this. Your, the talks have been great. <laughs> Well, keep coming back. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. For coming. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Bye. Bye.